Welcome back to Anderton's TV, everybody. Hello. Um, now, I'm guessing if you're a bit of a guitar aficionado, you'll have heard the name Fujigen over the years. It's one of the most famous guitar factories ever, based in Japan, been around since the 1960s, and I guess the reason they're probably most famous is that from the early 80s, for about uh, 15 or 20 years, they made all of the uh, guitars for Fender out of mm -hmm. Japan. Yeah. Some of the most famous Fender guitars of all time. Yeah, uh, other brands that they uh, have historically made guitars for, and in some instances continue to make uh, them for, would be brands like Ibanez. Yes. Now, FGN Guitars is the house brand of Fujigen. Yeah. So it's their own brand. And um, Fujigen. we've kind of been aware, I think, of these guitars for a while at Anderton's. Yeah. Um, but the other day, we were doing a little bit more digging and we were just very surprised at the price that the range started from. So you know, typically if you're talking about Japanese guitars now, you know, the Ibanez Japanese guitar range starts from what, 1,500, 2,000 yeah, pounds? Yeah. Fender Japanese guitars are certainly upwards of 1,000 pounds. Yeah. Um, the FGN range starts from 549 pounds for a Japanese made guitar. Yeah. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where we're starting our video today. We're gonna to go through a lot of guitars in this video, so use the timestamps below if you just want to fast forward to the model you're interested in. Oh man. Thank you, Mr. Pete. So this is, a, this is the most affordable one. Anyways. Okay, so we're mm -hmm. gonna start with what they call the Iliad range. I think Iliad is from uh, Lord of the Rings, isn't it? Yeah, okay. Oh, so the football team. Uh, Iliad Stadium. So. <laughs> That's the Etihad. Oh, sorry. Uh, close. Hell. Okay, so obviously it's based on a T-style guitar. Absolutely. Uh, we've got uh, three versions of the sort of entry level Iliad here today. Mm -hmm. um, you can get them in traditional finishes like the one Pete's holding, like the Burst. Yeah. You've got some metallic finish oh, options in the green. Super. Uh, and there's also um, a version with a humbucker at the neck, yes. which we've also got, which you'll also notice has got a, a, a rose with board. These are all um, 549 pounds. The specs of these, Again, it's pretty high-end specs. So, um, base with bodies, uh, maple uh, necks, mm -hmm. 25 and a half inch scale length. Yeah. Uh, they use their own brand pickups at this price point. Yep. You've got this um, six saddle, sort of modern T-style bridge, traditional wiring, switching. But here's some of the things that are a little different on these. They use what is called the circle fretting system. Now, we're not gonna go over and over and over on this, but all the guitars use the circle fretting system. Now you can, it's almost impossible to see this in real life, but each fret has a very slight smiley face uh, curve to it. Yep. And according to the CFS uh, blurb, it says it's extremely accurate pitch. It's obviously a slight intonation thing. It talks about uh, increasing the sustain and the harmonics. Um, it talks about improving the tones. It makes some bold claims yeah, here. Yeah. It's like the Viagra um, for your fingerboard. In fact, <laughs> what it makes is <laughs> there are six features here. Yeah. The first one is uh, intonation related, and the next five are all just about it sounding better. So Sounds better. Yeah, well, kind of. It talks about um, but sharply that's defined tone, fast resonance, bell clear sound, sonorous harmonics, and long sustain. Well, that's, claims, all, that's what you want, isn't it? Um, it's barely... It's barely visible. Visible. But anyway, 
Other features that I think we're going to see throughout this range are a compound radius fretboard. So that's where it has a slightly um, curvier radius at the top and it flattens yeah. out at the bottom. Uh, in millimeters, it's uh, 250 millimeters up here. Yeah. Instead of on up. screen now for inches and 350 millimeters down here on screen now for um, four inches. It has the J standard fret edge treatment. That is so absolutely smooth. one of the things when they sent us the samples, we all went, oh, it's immediately. Wow. It was like, yeah, you can feel there's the, that sort of Japanese-ness, I suppose. Uh, perfect, perfect. Belly cuts, which again is not a traditional T-style thing. No. Goto tuners, which again uh, are, and they're the good ones. They're the ones, that they're Pete's favorite kind of vintage yeah, style straight Goto's in there. tuners. So, Perhaps whilst Pete maybe just has a little noodle on the blue one, you'll see the range of traditional finishes, metallic finishes, and the one with the humbucker. You'll see the colors they come in. Oh, it's a blue slick. So the next one up in the Iliad range is this beautiful red guitar that Pete uh, is holding here. That's beautiful. Um, if, you're, <laughs> if, if you're familiar with this channel, you know we have a bit of fun with the Ibanez model numbers. Oh, uh, more Lord, of the yeah. same from yeah. FGN here. It must be a Japanese thing. Uh, so this is a JIL2CLASHM in <laughs> Candy Apple Red. Anyway, so the difference is, if I quickly whiz through the spec here, the difference is between this and the model below. This is a little bit more expensive now. We're up to the 849 price yeah. range here. Okay, we've gone to an ash body from yeah. a basewood body. It feels much lighter, absolutely. Okay, um, I think the tuners are the same. Yeah, the tuners, tuners are, are the same. same. Yeah. Uh, but we have now gone to Seymour Duncan pickups okay. on the next model. Up. So we've got an yeah. STR1 and a vintage 54. Yeah. Uh, we've gone to a, a different style bridge. So we've got the the, the three brass saddles, the bigger yep. brass saddles, yeah, yeah. perhaps a more vintage vibe. And, and, and the tray, you know, yep. the other ones don't have um, that. Yeah, absolutely. I'm much, I really like the switching system. So we've now got a four-way switch rather than a three-way. Positions two and three give you the option to switch between series and parallel wiring on the pickups. So one is a traditional tele sound in the middle position and the other is more like a pseudo humbucker kind of sound. Mm -hmm. um, it has a gig bag still. They all, I should say they, they've all got gig bags until you get into the top of the range and then it sort of change over to hard cases but there's nothing in the range that doesn't have a gig bag with it so i believe and i said for whatever reason this particular upgraded sort of version of the, the base iliad only comes in candy red so so these are base wood um, and this is one correct ash, or just okay. ash it says right, right. but ash, yeah okay. let's have a little listen okay Nice, 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 nice. Now we feel got... really good, man. Sorry to no, that they feel yeah. super, super nice. So we've got one more guitar with us today from the Iliad range, which is the the natural blonde oh, one yes. behind you. Natural blonde. Uh, this does come in another color uh, and also in a left-handed model as well. Yeah. Um, there are a couple Look other Iliad guitars. Maybe we'll just quickly whiz these on screen now because we don't have these today, but these are slightly more contemporary looking models. So one uh, is a slightly longer scale length with uh, 24 frets and EMG pickups on it. The other looks slightly more traditional, but it's got a beautiful, what looks like a Koa mm. top with a couple of humbuckers on it. But again, those you'll have to, we'll perhaps feature those in another video. We don't yes. have those today, but this one, the JIL2 Ash 
M, mm -hmm. couple of different colors, burst, beautiful two-tone burst with the black guard or this sort of yeah. natural finish with the um, black guard. Yeah, bound mm -hmm. edge around the body. Mm -hmm. Other than that though, exactly the same spec as okay. the candy red one. Okay. And actually, bizarrely, I'm a little surprised about this, the same price as well. Um, you would think oh, yeah. normally with the translucent finish and the binding, it ought to be a little bit more expensive. Wow. So I kind of... Um, well, you don't need to hear that, do I don't you? Know, yeah, probably we'll do not. I don't, I don't know why they give that a different model number. It's basically just the, Let me hold the, them the up translucent version of the red one. Yeah. So very nice too. I mean, 849. Imagine if Fender did a Seymour Duncan loaded Japanese made... 1500 quid, 1600 quid? Probably. 1700 quid. So, okay. So as I said before, you've seen some of the more contemporary versions of the Iliad on screen, which we haven't got today. Uh, so let's move on to the next model, which I believe is the Odyssey range. Okay, so uh, as I'm sure you've worked out, the Odyssey series is now more Strat style inspired. Um, and we're starting with the BOS2RHH, which is not as bad as Ibanez in fairness. Comes in two colours, this fantastic kind of charcoal-y sort of silvery grey colour, mm -hmm. and it comes in white as well. Um, okay. The basic spec of this model, a lot of the stuff that I talked about before is going to come through with regards to the circle fretting system uh, and the compound radius fretboard. Uh, this is back to a basswood body. Basswood, basswood, one of the two. Basswood, basswood. Um, rosewood fingerboard. Rosewood I, board. I should say as well, there is no mention of laurel or palfaro or anything it's from It's just FGN. rosewood board. It's, if it's not maple, it's rosewood this or maybe ebony as we get further up the range. piece of dark. Traditional 25 half inch scale length. Um, Got the, the, the circle fretting system again. Go to tuners. Are they the vintagey style ones again? Yeah, but in yeah, black this, is, this time. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's their own brand. Pickups again. It's a pair of direct mount humbuckers. So direct mount means there's no pickup rings. They're screwed straight into the oh! body. Eddie Van Halen used to say they sounded better. What do we know? Because you're mounting straight um, into the butt. So, and this is 599 pounds. So that's a again, good, that's a good price, It's a good price, I mean, right? you want to go a little bit, uh... <laughs> Sounds good, doesn't it? Well, when you say own brand pickups, you automatically maybe assume you go, oh, no, not I as don't good. Like that. Yeah, that sounds great, great, man. Let's just that was mm. just a bridge. That's the bridge. <laughs> That's great, man. Again, it's another, you know, if you, maybe you're looking at like a Charvel San Dimas or something at the moment and thinking, oh, I quite like that, but maybe I haven't got eight or 900 quid or whatever like that. I mean, Japanese made, I really it like that. It's great, the neck is super, we haven't talked about how they feel. I mean, the neck is super nice and satin feeling and the frets are beautifully done yeah. with the rolled balls on it's it. It's really and nice. So no, I think no, we've, we've no probably pull, shown pull, pull, you, that, no, very simple wiring. Straight through. Um, I guess we've shown you the white one on screen. Yeah, um, Nice and, yeah, recessed. Yeah. It's really nice. Yeah, um, it okay. is. Yeah. So that is the BOS2RHH. Uh, this next model up in the Odyssey series is called the JOS2TD. And if it ends in an M, it means it's got a maple board and it comes in a cool blue or pink finish. Mm. And if it ends in an R, it uh, means it's got a rosewood board. Other than that, the specs of these guitars are the same. So Pete's just going to play the, the maple neck one. It is an older body bolt on neck guitar, same sort of maple U shape um, carve, 25 and a half inch scale length. We've got now Goto Tuners, an FGN two point bridge. Yeah. Um, we have got FGN's single coil pickups and humbucking pickup at the bridge mm -hmm. uh, with a coil tap 
um, switch here that will change the humbucker into a single coil in positions one and two. Comes with a gig bag and costs eight ninety nine. And does it do, Lee? <laughs> Because that's what I'm looking at, and they look quite like uh, a guitar that... Anyway, whatever. Uh, here's the neck. system nice De action i'm nice, definitely getting nice, kind nice. of like ibanez az vibes from Absolutely, here yeah. clearly the, the the color choices are aiming more at perhaps someone that wants a traditional uh, looking guitar but with modern appointments it's probably about time we should look at this heel joint it's a really nicely done heel joint again um reminiscent of perhaps more expensive guitars than these would be you the german fender journeyman when they came out they yep. had this exact yep. uh, configuration so you get your hand around there you put your Right in the palm no. of your what is that called? Palm of your hand. Yes. Boom. And you. I there. really like the again. I like the the way they've uh, engraved the. So you've got Mount Fuji at the bottom, and then something written in Japanese. And apologies for my ignorance here. I can't tell you what that says. Okay. So that's that guitar, right, Mr. Pete? Are we moving yes, on? We are. I suspect this is going to be a popular one. Yeah. This is the JOS2 FMM. Only comes in this color. Beautiful. Uh, it's sort of had, I suppose, a downgrade on the body woods, uh, or at least in terms of cost we sort of have. So it's a basewood body with a flame maple veneer on the top of it. Actually, mm -hmm. it doesn't say veneer. I'm guessing it's a veneer. It could be a top. It's probably a veneer. Uh, so flame maple. Um, but what we do now get are Seymour Duncan pickups. Alne you've got an Alnico 2 at the, at the neck. You've got a vintage staggered in the middle, and you've got oh. a Pegasus... Oh. At the at the bridge. Wow. Uh, okay. Still got the vintage style go to yeah. tuners, which you'll yeah. notice will change on the next model up. And again, I, I can't be bothered to keep saying it, but all that sort of circle fretting system, compound radius. I suppose if you've used the timestamps and jumped to the bit where I said that, it's worth me reminding yeah. you. kind of guitar oh. what do we play this kind of well, thing well it, it just reminds me of that kind of pearly guard heavily flame top with the drop uh here yeah. it just says to me stevie ray with the one he played so yeah absolutely or like of like where their heritage is from of when they used to do like yeah. the blinged up strats like this but obviously you never got one of those for 949 absolutely quid. not you still don't Just try a bit of a.
uh, variants now of the Odyssey that are all basically the same spec and the same price, oh, but in that. different finishes. This is my favourite one, which is one the one that Pete's going to play. But you've got That's my um, one. you've got a, a, a matte finish, uh, flame top on an ash body uh, in this sort of bluey purple colour. You've got the same thing again with a I'll red silky oak um, top silky on oak. an ash body. The one I'm giving to Pete now is Acacia Coa Acacia. on an ash body with a gloss finish. And the final one uh, is Natalie Imbruglia's uh, signature guitar. <laughs> you I Why does Google have two back buttons? So the spec on these four guitars, apart from the colors and, and the, the tops that they're using on the guitars are the same. Yeah. Um, traditional 25 and a half inch scale length. All these specs will be on the Anderson's website. Yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. The main difference jumping from this one upwards, uh, main component difference is we've gone from the traditional style vintage tuners now to a really cool looking, still vintage looking, but now a locking tuner. Yeah. So it's and locking I think from the top. as well, aren't they? I think they're, they're... I'm staggered. Oh no, there is a string tree, so yeah, they're probably not staggered. Let me see. Mm, that one looks like that. They are definitely not staggered. No, let's not? not say It's that. just me no, that's okay. It's just because you're blind, because you <laughs> too much. So, <laughs> quick spin on this, because yeah. it's going to basically sound pretty exact, much the you know, same. It sounds exactly the same, right? You say that. Sounds a lot more Imbuya to me. Yeah, absolutely. Even though that's the Koa one. It sounds more Acacia. <laughs> Sounds more honey, -y. honey. -y. It sounds it's, great, man. It's great uh, to play. They're all really nice to play. So mm. those those last four with the kind of the the, the sort of super nice looking tops are all eleven ninety nine each, including a gig bag. There are three more models in the Odyssey range. These are the top of the range Odyssey ones. They all the model numbers start with E O S, and the least or oh, the most affordable, least expensive, whichever one you want to call it in the EOS range is this one here called the ALR. This is just under 1400 pounds and just comes mm -hmm. in the white finish. I'll go through the specs in a minute. Um, if you go a little dearer, you've got the uh, EOS Ash M, which I think you get a bit of change out of 1500 pounds and comes in a beautiful blue color. Um, looking at the spec, it's basically the same just you pay a little bit extra i think for the translucent finish um and then finally finally the most expensive one is called the eos fmr that comes in a couple of gorgeous colors one is a sort of a orangey yellow sunburst the other is a sort of a see-through blue sort of fade which again will be on screen now and again looking at the specs it would appear again to just be the same guitar we're in a slightly more expensive finish again that's about 1600 pounds and all of these eos models come with um a hard case now yeah so let's go through uh the one that pete's got you all right there yeah i'm just it's got a recessed uh, um drum system well it, so, so you can go back a i'm bit. pleased because i think there's a few bits on here that maybe the spec doesn't really show but they yeah. are different so it, it's a bolt-on neck guitar two-piece yeah. older body Quarter sawn, uh, maple quarter sawn neck. Nice. Rosewood board. Yeah. Uh, we've we've now got for the first time I think we've seen an actual Goto five ten trem system. An actual one as here, opposed yeah. to an FGN own yeah. brand one. Still got the locking Goto tuners. Yeah. FGN pickups. Um, okay. And now we've got two uh, switches, micro switches on here. One of which is a coil tap and the other one is a humbucker direct switch. So it will straight. bypass the tone and volume circuit yeah. and just go so straight So if you're in humbucker. one position here or whatever, and you're, you know, you're playing your... It takes they you call this, to the monster. They call this their double tricky system. It's double tricky system? <laughs> double tricky. One last thing before Pete goes in. Okay, so uh, these are not the same pickups that are in the um, they're, they're, they're FGM pickups, but they're from a different series. One would assume, uh, a, 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 you know, a, a, a more expensively voiced pickup. 
Ooh, uh, near the side dots. Yeah, did you show, sorry, did we show him the neck, the, the um, heel car? Yeah, here you go. Look at that. So that's different. Again, like, you know, on the, the it's simpler on the cheaper models. That's very, a stunning carve, isn't it? That's, um, yeah, it's a very really Ibanez nice. uh, mm. car carve. Yeah, hard case. Well, I think we said that. Yeah. Uh, actually, the logo's different as well, isn't it? It's like an this inlaid, is inlaid sort of mother uh, of pearl, pearl, pearl type. Uh, oh, and by the way, figured out what this says. This dragon. Dragon. Love dragon dragon. Breath. I love a dragon and a volcano. Okay, good for you. For Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Wow, that's, uh, that, is, that sounds good. Sounds good. Good sustain. Good sound. Monster sustain in these. put a little lever on it so you can go out here because it's a little <laughs> bit hard to I can't do that Stop trying to be one. Tom Morello okay so should we move on yeah I mean you'll be pleased to know if you've watched this far that we're nearly at the end here <laughs> because uh, although there are three more series of guitars uh, we don't have many of them, and there aren't many in those series anyway. That's so, a great guitar. This is a gorgeous guitar. Uh, How much was this again? Thirteen seventy-nine. Nice. Yeah. Nice. A little bit dearer if you want the sort of flamier, translucent Madeira. tops. Holy smokes! Now here we go. Look at this. It's really nicely made. Uh, oh, um, oh, oh. Okay. Oh. So oh. Mythic series is clearly a more modern, um, appointed sort of super strat vibey oh this is like a, is this it a, is like you've got an arch top right and um i've got an arch top i've got a string tail hard tail i've got fishman yeah so there's only two guitars in in the um mythic series uh one is a six string one is a seven string uh the six string which is this one is available in this kind of interesting open pour white uh open pour ash and it comes in white or black now wow um, so these will come uh, tuned from the factory in drop C. Uh, I was a little bit surprised there that it, so it's still a traditional 25 and a half inch scale length. Yeah. So they've not decided to go open um, tuning. They have strung it with 11 to 52s. Yeah, I can feel it's uh... um, Again, killer spec on this guitar. So we've got, it's a bolt on uh, construction, but an ash body, a five piece uh, maple and walnut uh, neck with mm. an asymmetrical, i.e. a different kind of carve on one side of it to the other, yeah, slim like U-shape. Yeah, that's very um, slim. We've got Goto tuners, an FGN bridge and tailpiece. We've got the Fishman Fluence Modern system on it, which means that the um, one of the controls should be push-pull to activate the two different voices. So I'm guessing, yeah, that's the tone control. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, and then we've just got a standard three-way switch. Uh, anyway, the six string is eleven forty nine, and the seven string is twelve ninety nine. Mm. I like this. This is not a, you know, this is not your standard sort of, you know, Gibson style um, tunematic tail piece. No, it's it? good. It's higher it just looks like the uh, fatter like, and chunkier. Yeah, absolutely. Just like and me. it's the sort of almost like an offset double cut kind of vibe. Reminds me a bit like the sort of is it? Well, this is it Jackson Chris Broderick kind of model. That yeah, had, was that sort of vibe? But what's the fretboard? Is it ebony? Ebony fretboard? No, no dot markers. It's badass. Just looks badass. cool. It's bad Reverse ass. headstock as yeah, well. Absolutely. Oh, and and these are locking as well. Look. Oh, 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 yeah. yeah. So. Wow.
They're powerful, nice. these fish, powerful. fish them pickups, aren't they? On yet, no, hey? there's no wow, drive. Wow, that yet. is pokey, Absolutely. pokey and low and growly. Yeah, so I'm going to try. <laughs> so let's just try the uh, the green side of the protein on the back on the bridge pickup. I mean, if I turn it up, it up. Tried to sweat with 11s on it. Wow! It was interesting. You were getting some harmonics out of there that I was wondering. I, sort of, my brain went back to this whole, you know, uh, thing that they said with the circle fretting system is supposed to improve harmonics. Yeah, maybe but it does. It, maybe it, it doesn't. Who good, knows? Man. Somebody was saying the other day, why do you shake that neck around? And then oh, I was like, it doesn't make any difference. That it makes a difference. But look. Yeah. It also makes a difference anyway. Look, you, well that done. sounds good, man. Well done for getting to the end of this video. I, I apologise in advance that we don't have any of the final two guitars here, but we will give them a couple of minutes on screen now. So, they do a guitar called The Flame. Um, I've got to say, I get... I get sort of throws of Nick Huber's kind of. Oh yeah, um, which that one looks is it great. He, is it this? I mean, it's obviously a sort of single cut modern yeah. Les Pauly kind of vibe uh, to it. But it, what, what's the? What is it? The Krauster no, or the? No, no not the Krauster. It's the, the next one, obviously. The Orca. Orca. Is it the Orca? Yeah. I don't know why. I mean, obviously the headstock yeah. is quite a unique FGN kind of uh, that vibe looks beautiful, on it. That but thing. it does look cool. So the expert is about two grand. So wow. obviously, you know, but. Again, it's better than ten grand or whatever Expertly the price. Uber is. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing those. And is a uh, yeah, I, me too. I, I'm pretty sure we've ordered these. So again, it, it's all the usual things you'd associate with, you know, a, a mahogany body with a flame top and a rosewood board and 24 and three quarter inch scale length. You can see where they're going with this. Um, they've put again their own FGN pickups on it. Uh, comes with a hard case. I'm interested to hear that. Uh, and then finally, finally, and this is much more traditional uh, looking, is their Neo Classic range. Oh, let's have a look. Uh, I wonder where they got the inspiration for those from. Oh, I don't know. Uh, so, and again, Ooh. we've ordered these, um, particularly the customs, because I say the customs, they, they, do a, they do a white and a black guitar that very much looks like a, a Les Paul custom, just purely and simply because there's a big gap in the Gibson price list between buying a, an Epiphone, mm. you know, a nice Epiphone one, and then yeah. there's a big gap before you can get an actual Les Paul Custom. Yeah. And I thought this was interesting. It's kind of sit sort of uh, in the middle of that. So, um, Made again, in Japan as well. Again, they're very obviously Gibson inspired. Yes. But I guess, again, it's they all sit in that price point again where you've gone beyond anything you can buy from Epiphone. And really yeah. not much has started in the um, uh, yeah. US range yet. So these might appeal. And again, you know, it's they're what can really get? good. Sire, maybe they do like a black and a white uh, not a, LP not, style. Yeah, for 500 quid. Yeah. And they're really good for 500 yeah. quid. But I think if you want that. You want I, that extra. I, I well, we, need to, we need to film them. We need to video them. These I are would, amazing. I would say the closest things to these are going to be... Uh, ESP and LTD. That's correct. So you're either, you're either, again, at the sort of LTD deluxe end, which will be a, perhaps a little bit cheaper, but of course Korean made, so yeah. perhaps not as good, who knows. Or you'll be into the E2 range, yeah. which I think will probably be dearer. So yeah. there you go, guys. Thank you very much for sitting through this. Um, 
We're excited. Um, I'm are very excited. excited. I think we're they're excited. great. Are you excited? Yeah. I, I genuinely I'm do. I, again, they're tired now, but I'm excited. This is a. This looks like one of those little sort of um, hidden gems that are out there. That if you can just sort of get over the fact that maybe the headstock isn't Fender or Gibson or something super super famous, you're getting crazy good value. A hidden Fuji gem. It's a hidden Fuji gem. <laughs> There we go. And on that note. Um, and on that note, <laughs> yes. Uh, links below where you can find out details about the whole lot if yeah. you want to. Thank you for joining us this afternoon or this morning or like and in subscribe, the middle of the night please. while you're out. <laughs> Shut the f***ing <laughs> ass. We're so f***ing <laughs> close. <laughs> so, on. So there you are. Thank you for joining us on this fine and sunny day. Uh, and we'll see oh, you radio. in another video soon.